Welcome to the Bartholomew Center. This is Lower Makanji's small museum in Camp Olympic in a small barn where you can see exhibits about the way of life in the township over the decades. Now we're going to talk about a form of embroidery that you don't see anymore and rather than look at me I think you'd like to look at the embroidery itself. It's called Berlin Work and it's made with bright red wools on an even weave canvas and the reason it's called Berlin Work is because the techniques came from Berlin in Germany. Now, the top one is one that was given to the museum before we had a museum, was given to the Historical Society and we had to have it restored and it's not very perfect. The one in the middle um, is in very much better shape and that again was a gift to the museum and the one at the bottom is a photographic copy of a very beautifully restored one. Now these were all done by girls who lived within a half a mile of each other. They undoubtedly knew each other. They possibly went to the same church and they very probably had the same embroidery teacher because the techniques are very similar, the patterns are very similar uh, and the teacher would have had books of patterns. That's what differentiates this kind of embroidery from earlier forms. This was inexpensive um, books that had all kinds of designs, either discrete designs for a whole sampler or just small designs that you could assemble yourself into a designer, came from publishers in Germany, starting in Berlin. Mostly they were women who did it, and the very first one who put together the designs and the wools and the canvas as a package deal was the wife of a publisher who helped her get started. And then it became a cottage industry for women in the area. Uh, the Berlin wools were so called because in Berlin, well, she lived in Berlin, but uh, in Berlin there was a very uh, strong chemicals industry, and they, one of the items that was uh, that where they were world leaders was dyes, and these dyed wools were much more vibrant than other wools, and they have kept their color over the years, as you can see. They're much more attractive in some ways than silks, which tend to parch out a little bit and don't look so pretty after a uh, hundred years or more. Now, um, girls at the time that these were done, which is the early 19th century, the 1850s, but it started actually earlier than that, uh, by 1840 over 14,000 patterns had been published. So um, after, that was a couple decades after it first started. Um, this is when young girls were all making needlework. Some were making useful needlework, and some were also making decorative needlework, just for pleasure. So they would sit, young girls, under 10 sometimes, and the bottom one was only seven or eight years old when she completed hers. Uh, they would do this as one of the things that you did during daylight hours, because you, uh, well, it was one way to get out of work, of course. <laughs> All the girls had to do household work. Um, but these were probably wealthier families than average. They were farm families, um, but they, um, they had leisure time, which meant that they had more money than the average family. Martha A. M. Schmeyer was one of the girls. Her full name was Martha Ann Massian Schmeyer. She was born here in Lower Mukundi on the 7th of December, 1841. Uh, her sampler was completed in 1853. Mm -hmm. Ellen S. Stephen, whose full name was Ellen Sophia Stephen, was born near East Texas in 1943. Her, her sampler was completed in 1852. She was 10 or 11 years old at the time. Sarah Danner, who is also known as Sally, was born in 1845. Uh, she was the youngest. Her sampler was completed in 1853 when she was seven or eight years old. The Danners have long been a very well-known, well-established family in Lower Mukundi Township and it's really nice for us to see an example of the actual handwork of one of the family members. And we encourage you to come to the museum so that you can see these in person and see how vibrant the colors still are and how fine some of the stitching is so you can admire what your antecedents could do many, many years ago, and many of us could try but wouldn't get the same quality.